This video is sponsored by Serverless 360. More about them at the end. Jer Smart asks, how can you deploy and manage apps at scale in Azure? And if you have a question or an idea for a new video, comment below and maybe we'll answer that question in an upcoming video. Now, did you know that several Azure services you're already using are built on top of something called a virtual machine scale set? Things like the Azure Firewall, Kubernetes Service, and Bastion, just to name a few. Now, a scale set is a single resource that manages a group of load balanced virtual machines. And scaling can be done manually or automatically, providing redundancy and improved performance for the entire application. And since a scale set is a collection of VMs, all the VMs need to be configured the same way. So we need a central way to do all of that. And we have three sections of the code here. First is we're going to build the lab. Next, we're going to install our application, which in this case is our web server, and we'll have a customized web page. And then in step three, we're going to deploy an update to that application. And I'll give you the link for all of this at the end so you can test it out for yourself. So for the first part, let's build our lab. Highlight that section of the code and kick it off. And this will take about four minutes or so to complete. Once it's done over in the portal, you'll have a new resource group with a virtual network, load balancer, network security group, public IP address, and the VM scale set. So let's click on the scale set and it looks pretty much like a virtual machine. Now on the left though, we do have some different options like instances. Here's where you can see the individual VMs in the set. And back on the left, if you click on scaling, you can see at the bottom here, we're using manual and it's currently set to two VMs. And you could just increase that to four, click save at the top and that'll scale up two more instances. Now back in scaling, let's change it to the auto scale. And this is where you can leverage any of the Azure metrics for any of those resources to tell the scale set that it should scale out or scale in. Now, which metric should you actually pick? Well, that's gonna depend on your application. So one option could be to use the CPU percentage. If it gets over say 70% for 10 minutes, then scale out. Or in the case of a web server, we could actually look at the load balancer and see how many requests we're actually serving. So you can change those settings at the top. And then down near the bottom, we can set the number of requests that come in and what time frame we're looking at all of those requests. And if it goes over the threshold, we're gonna scale out by a certain number, and you can set that at the very bottom. Now the sky is the limit here, but it is a best practice to also have a scale in rule. So click add at the bottom, and then click right over there and add a new rule. Use the same metrics at the top, and then just change that one option there to decrease. Set your appropriate time frame and how many VMs you wanna scale in by. Now, if you're starting to see the possibilities of what Autoscale could do for you, click the thumbs up. And if you're not quite there yet, give me another minute or two, see if I can convince you. Now you can further control which VMs get removed when you scale in, if you just click right there at the scale in policy. And you've got three options, deleting the oldest VMs or deleting the newest VMs or kind of doing it in a more balanced way. Again, the best choice here will be dictated by your applications. And now that you know the basics of how all of this works, let's go back to VS Code. So highlight the install app v1 section, and this is going to use something called a custom script extension, which basically lets you run code against the VMs remotely. And this code actually is going to come from a GitHub repo, and it's going to build our web server and set up our web page, which will just show the name of the server we're connected to. That'll just take a minute to run, so if we go back to the portal, we take a look at our VM scale set and the extension blade, we can see our custom script extension is present. And if you click on it, you can even see the script that we ran. Let's go back to the overview tab, and then you'll wanna copy the public IP address right there, then open a new browser tab and paste that in. And it looks like here we've hit VM number three. So if we go back to the portal and back to instances, we can see our auto scale policy has already done its work going from the four VMs we provisioned manually down to two VMs because of how much traffic is coming in the load balancer and two VMs was our minimum. So I'm gonna check the box over there for VM three and then push the stop button to simulate an outage. 
and only VM3 is going to shut down. The rest of the VMs in the scale set are going to stay up. Now, if you go back to the web page and refresh, we can see that VM0 has picked up the load and our application is still available for our users. So now let's switch gears a little bit to app management and updates. Back in VS Code, you want to highlight the app v2 section. And this is going to grab a different file off the same GitHub repo, which is going to update our script extension to change that web page a little bit. So after you run that code, go back to our web browser, and we see now it's using the updated page on VM0. So the running VM in the scale set did get the update. But what about VM3? So if we go back to the instance page and start that guy up again, and then we'll also reboot VM0 so we can fail it over to VM3 and refresh the browser and it shows VM3 also received that update because the extension is applied to the scale set and all the VMs in it. So that also means if we go back to scaling and then we change our minimums at the bottom from two to four, when the two new VMs spin up, they also get the latest version of our application. So now that you got the whole story here, can you see the possibilities of how Autoscale can help you on your applications? If so, click that thumbs up. And I do want you to try this out for yourself and then try to improve on the process by deploying your own applications. So the link for all the code that we ran today is in the resource section under the video and it's actually going to an Azure doc. And there are all kinds of great examples in the doc so you can learn all kinds of stuff. And speaking of learning, I'll tell you the next thing you should think about after we hear about our sponsor. The cloud can be a complex place, but Serverless 360 is trusted by many of the world's leading organizations to remove application blind spots and resolve your problems rapidly. You can instantly visualize, monitor, and fix any issues in your cloud apps, and then achieve end-to-end -end tracking of your business process flows, and Serverless 360 will save you time by auto-generating your documentation, turning your Azure subscription data into actionable insights for usage, security, and cost. Try Serverless 360 free for 15 days, or you can book a demo using the links in the resource section under the video. So the next thing you should learn about is how you could use custom images, packaging that with your application for your scale sets, which is right over here, or you can learn more about a service that uses scale sets, which is Azure Bastion, right over there. Happy learning.